When I took that decision and that step to be a single mother, I didn't. At that point, you always feel that the whole world is crashing on your on your head, and how are you going to manage? I think, I think that's a very normal human reaction. Trust me, even to date, you will hear say, "Chill, you're a woman, you can't do it." You know, like yeah, you still yeah. get to hear that. Yeah. You they may bite their tongue for saying it, but that's always a thought that is there. You know, I think over the years, yeah. I really have changed quite a bit. I have to say, I have to say, television has has helped me. Evolve a lot. For every one grey hair, mm -hmm. I feel I I gain that much more wisdom. I gain that much more, uh, 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 you know, stability in life. That much more happiness. That much more love. The kind of confidence or the kind of carefree attitude mm -hmm. or the, uh, you know, care a damn attitude that you had when you were younger. You don't have it when you are in your forties. Mm -hmm. You are far more cautious. not just a woman with experience but a woman with wisdom strength and the most important part a lovely heart joining me in a conversation on woman up season 3 is none other than malaika arora hi hi anna how are you i'm good how are you very well thank you it's always fun to be doing something with big brother When you started off in your twenties, you got the tag of being sexy, and it's been twenty years now, and you still have that tag. You have maintained this for so long, and somewhere broken the myth that women have a short life in the industry. What do you have to say? My about God, I've really held on to that tag. <laughs> I'm not letting go anytime soon. It's like when you bestow somebody a title or a crown or something, you hang on to it forever. Yeah. So uh, I guess I've just hung on to this tag. No, I guess. Uh, I've always said it. I've said it back then. I say it now. I'll say it. I don't know. It sounds repetitive, but um, I've always said that I'd rather be known as as sexy and spicy and you know all of that than yeah. being known as picky and thundy. You know, whatever. Yeah. I like that. I mean, and I've always been known like that. I'm a very feisty person by by nature. So uh, honestly, it's not a conscious thing hmm. to oh because. Because I've been termed as mm. you know, oh she's hot, oh she's sexy. Mm. That I've got to, I have to uh, live up to that uh, standard. Yeah. I do not believe in that. Uh, I just feel it's part and parcel of the person that I am. I mean, there yeah. are days where I can be just the opposite of of being uh, supposedly sexy. Thirty days in a month, you don't particularly feel uh, uh, feel amazing. Uh, in fact, I, I say fifteen days of the month, I'm at my peak. and the 15 the other 15 days of the month yeah. i'm struggling because all women are going through some hormonal whatever whatever so those 15 days i'm really struggling at 15 otherwise i'm good to go what do you feel on those other 15 days when you're not feeling the best i feel bloated <laughs> i feel i feel low sometimes i feel uh, like i'm not at my optimum and i'm i'm the kind of person that needs to be doing things hmm. all the time i cannot sit still i'm a very very active in fact i'm an overactive person in fact everybody has to tell me you know it's okay calm down chill yeah. you know it's all right take a breather and uh, you know i want to go back in time a little back in 90s when you just started off your second song came good in alish mitha and uh, you know someone asked you whether uh, how does it feel performing in a song because you were also modeling and how and you were like i even perform when i'm modeling how did you have that confidence at that time to give an answer like that but that's a fact and i think that's yeah. very insulting i think that's very uh, it's like typecasting women i mean just because you're pretty that doesn't mean you do not mm. have a brain or you cannot be a thinking person uh, i don't think i think all those all those stereotypes have changed over a period yeah. of time gone are the days where we are considered as as second class citizens as yes. as uh, you know not the Uh, not the uh, the male uh, hmm. around. So yes, I think all of that has all those notions have kind of changed over the years. Women are striving better than than ever. Uh, so yeah, I guess maybe I must have said it back then, probably because that's how I felt, and I yeah. feel the same way today. Do you vaguely remember how women were treated back in the industry? Did you see a lot of disparity happening around you? Well, there's still a lot of disparity. Of course, a lot of it has changed. Yeah. You can visibly see that change. Yes, yeah. back then, uh, I mean, 
I mean, basic things like women were always given second billing, mm -hmm. pay parity. Uh, uh, there was always, uh, you know, and we live in a in a hero-dominated, uh, you know, industry. All of that. But I've also said, I've also, um, I've also have to give due credit to the fact that all the work that I've done in the in the business in the film industry, which yeah. has given me so much of love and and yeah. and respect. Uh, I've worked with ama amazing women as as well, you yeah. know, uh, and they've uh, really you know, made sure that we stand out, we've given that platform. I've also had the, uh, the privilege to work with, uh, with heroes and with, with male uh, counterparts who have really, uh, you know, who have really given me a lot of uh, push. A push, you know, never made me feel, you know, hmm. different or whatever. But you said that it still sort of exists, in what way does the disparity still exist? <clears throat> what do you witness? Trust me, even to date you will hear say, chill, you're a woman, you can't do it. You know, like, yeah, you still yeah. get to hear that. Yeah. You, they may bite their tongue for saying it, but that's always a thought that is there, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, those things are still there. Baby steps are still, hmm. uh, you know, being taken in the right, in the right direction. Uh, it may take, you know, a few years from now, but I think I firmly am of the firm belief that uh, it's all in, it will all happen in, in good time. And I think we should just have, keep the faith. No, I agree. And we're taking baby steps. I think it will get eventually. Of course. We'll I mean, look there. at it. I mean, today you are sitting, you know, over here doing an interview. Uh, you know, you're holding court. You're being probably earlier. You wouldn't take a woman so seriously yeah. conducting an, an interview of, of sorts. So, yes, things are changing. Changing, for sure. And, you know, back then you've done some iconic songs. <coughs> uh, did you have an issue with the term item number or how it was you know? At that point, it didn't really have too much of an impact uh, yeah. on me. I just did it because I felt like, you know, what great. I'm getting a chance to, to do something that I love. I'm getting yes. paid for it. Yes. I'm getting love for it. I'm getting respect for it. So, so why not? Uh, eventually, yes, uh, you know, uh, people did take offense to the fact. And then eventually I was like, you know, okay, fine. The term item just seemed a little, you know, mm. derogatory. It just seemed like, or maybe the way it was being perceived or the way it was being used, the connotation was just seemed a little derogatory. But uh, then eventually I think that also changed. So many people being so vocal about the fact yeah. that, you know, uh, you know, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, have such vulgar, uh, double meaning, derogatory yeah. kind of lyrics. So even that has has Change. changed quite yeah. a bit. I mean, how much of it do you do mm. you hear bar, barring a few things here and there? But even that, yeah. people are far more uh, uh, conscious of. So yes, yeah, so I think uh, back then I didn't think too much of it. I was even talking to Mandira Peri. She had like this. She is very uh, anxious when she entered her thirties, and she's like, maybe I won't get work now. Maybe I won't mm. get work now. That time there was a lot of pressure on women to be relevant. Now the definition of relevancy has changed. How do you think has changed? How would you define relevancy you know, now? I feel we all have that, irrespective. Mm -hmm. I mean, at whatever age, of course, the older you get, yeah. the more your insecurities, you know, come to the forefront. They're far more in any which way, yeah. uh, whether you know, I mean, every damn thing, the way you look, the way the work, mm -hmm. whether whether you'll be able to, you know, match up to a younger. Uh, counterpart whether you know so I am no different so yeah. I felt my insecurities when I was 18 yeah. when I was in my 20s when I was in my 30s and now my 40s so those that doesn't go how much of it I let it affect me is what is more is yeah. more important I uh, don't let those insecurities get to me I yeah. feel that I need to have a plan mm. for everything for every you know uh, to move forward in mm. in life I need to be able to look forward to something I need to keep changing I need to keep reinventing I need to keep going back to see, okay, this is what I can do or can't do. So in terms of insecurities, like I said, I had it at 18, I have it today in my 40s. So that doesn't change. But do you get confident with time as time goes? You get more secure and you care less maybe? Actually, you know, this is a, this is a very debatable question. There yeah. are a lot of uh, people, I mean, when I speak, they say the kind of confidence or the kind of carefree attitude mm. or the, uh, you know, care a damn attitude that you had when you were younger. You don't have it when you were in your mm. 40s. You are far more, uh, you know, you're far more cautious, you're far more, uh, uh, you know, you think things through. But that also comes with age. That comes yeah. with a certain amount of, of responsibility, a certain yeah. amount of, of having experience in life. You're not so brash or rash like the way you were in yeah. your 20s. In my case, uh, you know, I mean, I would say, you try not to repeat the same mistakes that you've mm. done. You kind of mm. move forward. So yeah, with age, you just become 
maybe wiser <laughs> that's yeah. that's it i mean not that you are yeah. i don't think i don't have i don't necessarily say oh you know I, after a certain age you are or uh, uh, you know all wise and all all intel i don't think so but yes i would like to believe with with every year i am yeah. uh, more patient and, and a, maybe a little bit wise and uh, you know with the pap culture being so much <coughs> uh, now in today's time it's like even if you're going down it's a runway for celebrities uh, do you feel there's too much pressure to keep up with for your gym looks for uh, you know your I hair know. or makeup or whatever no yeah i don't i don't look at it that way i look at it they're doing their job hmm i mean i am not here to to please anybody yeah. if i have to go looking the way i want to just i want to go i'm not there to please anyone yeah. but yes i feel some of it is a little over the top mm. uh, people are using this you know this whole culture like i don't know what's going on people have gone crazy you know yeah. doing crazy stuff so yeah. uh, but again each to their own i'm nobody to sit down here in judgment about what somebody should do or shouldn't do i think there's got to be a little bit of uh, some sort of restraint some sort of uh, somewhere you draw the line and i and i keep saying at the end of the day you say pap culture pap culture they're doing their job i mean for yeah. them it is it is their lively livelihood so, so uh, you can't fault them uh, for it you have a shield over you you're very guarded you don't let loose very easily but does this come from a fact that there was a time you were wearing your heart on your sleeve No that's just me that's just my personality always that's always been me i've been very very i've been a complete I'm very I'm an introvert. I've always uh, <clears throat> never liked to share too much. Yeah. I I would be the type, you know, to speak when spoken to. Mm. I would not necessarily want to indulge beyond the hello highs and the pleasantries or uh, you know, keep things to the bare minimum. And in terms of my feelings and the person that I am, yeah. that that is even more more guarded. I think over the years yeah. I really have changed quite a bit. I have to say I have to say television has has helped me evolve a lot personally because okay. i feel being on television hmm. you have to let your your guard down why would you uh, say that because you when you're connecting with an audience you're huh. sitting and you're judging a show or a reality show yeah. you cannot be false you can and i'm not saying i'm being pretentious huh. i'm just i'm just saying that i'm very i'm very guarded as a person you have to let that down when you when you're relating to somebody out there there are people sitting at home and watching you you're 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 constantly uh, talking to contestants to participants to to aspirants you know yeah. from kids from all over the country who are coming and using that stage as a platform to achieve their dreams and yeah. to and to you know make the most of that opportunity i need to be far more acceptable and relate and relatable yeah. to that which means i need to drop that God. guard of mine uh, so somehow i felt i feel television has really helped me thaw quite a, a bit on on that front over there having said that i'm still very uh, my personal life is my personal life my personal space is my personal space and what i i put out there as much as i think is is necessary and that needs to be yeah. that needs to be shared or that needs to be uh said because yeah. that's what i'm comfortable with but i would give television a lot of credit that's new i didn't for, know this for this for this change over the years of the yeah. person that i am how do you face your insecurities now i may work out i may be a certain way i may be fit etc etc because and that is because i for me it's mm. it's not to fill an insecurity of mine or a void of mine i yeah. do it because i feel good about it i mean yeah. uh I if I'm trolled because I have stretch marks so be it people have far deeper insecurities yeah. in in life I have my own own share but does that fear you that maybe once you grow like you you're going to have your first gray hair or your uh, or your dot on your skin or whatever but that's part and parcel, parcel of, of life for every one gray hair mm -hmm. i feel i i gain that much more wisdom i gain that much more stability in life that much more happiness that much more love so my gray hairs are just testament that that each year will be a bigger and better year for me you know you've also uh, had your fair shares of lows in life does sympathy annoy you sympathy no it doesn't annoy me i think I although I'm not looking for sympathy I'm yeah. never looking for that it doesn't annoy me yeah, but, but yeah I mean I hate that uh, you know what annoys me someone so sad yeah bichari <laughs> I'm not a bichari yeah. I'm not so yeah maybe that this is we offer irritates me so yeah actually to answer your question it does irritate me sometimes when someone's trying too yeah. hard to yeah I've never really thought about it now that you're asking yeah. me uh yeah when somebody is unnecessarily trying to give you that 
uh, sympathy. I can understand if so, you know somebody is giving your shoulder to cry or somebody is being sympathetic to your to your situation. Yeah, that is understandable, but unnecessary sympathy. I don't know. People make a very big deal when a woman starts fresh. What's your outlook towards that? I don't know why it's such a big deal. I feel uh, isn't that good? Any anybody with. Uh, being able to give life or being able to give new life hmm. isn't it a good thing it's yeah. it's to act you know i think it's uh, it's positive it's it's yeah. in the right direction so i don't understand why people should look at it negatively or you know or have or try to pull you down for it yeah. i mean the reason you're starting afresh is because at the end of the day you want to make sure that your past baggage is mm. is mine. That's why you start afresh. Yeah. Now, I mean, at the same time, I'm not the kind to forget my past. My mm. past is my past, but that doesn't mean I've erased it and I, and I don't and I don't know. My past is it has made me stronger and a and a better person yeah. uh, today. My past has helped me evolve. So I'm never gonna just you know mm. uh, sideline it or or just dismiss it. Right. Uh, but yes, wanting to start afresh, I think uh, I think that's always a good and a positive thing. Yeah. Now I've seen like you and your girl gang go for a lot of lunches and it seems super fun. Do you guys bond on talking about motherhood and like you know we talk about <laughs> everything right from yeah. <clears throat> right from who seeing who in the west to what's the coolest cocktail to you my favorite lip color to hair color to clothes yeah. to cooking to recipes let yeah. me tell you food and recipes is something that we really love. to everything to motherhood to kids crying to colic to everything we discuss anything and everything under the sun i mean when we decide to meet we say we'll meet for one hour two mm -hmm. hours it's never one hour two hours it's minimum <laughs> five hours so yeah that's a girl there's a lot of things to catch up on yeah and uh, tell me has it been difficult for you uh, to be a single mother to be an uh, to focus so much on your health to work to uh, run a business like so many things you are also a brand ambassador for a yoga brand so how do you manage all of it and now arhan is also away studying when i took that decision at that step to be a single mother i didn't at that point you always feel that the whole world is crashing on your on your head and how are you going to manage i think that's i think that's a very normal human reaction i mean yeah. but uh, having said that i also knew that it was something that i needed to i have to take on i have to be responsible i have a son mm -hmm. uh, he's growing up he he needs me more than more than ever i have yeah. to i have to be that example the right example i have to be able to uh, to steer him in the in the right direction and I, at the same time let him make his own mistakes so yes i did feel scared vulnerable mm -hmm. Uh, frightened, all of those emotions. Mm. Uh, but I also felt that I had to take one day at a time. Okay. I couldn't take giant leaps because that was just not. It's just mm. not. It was just not possible. I had to uh, see what every day would unfold for me. And uh, at that point, the only thing I was thinking about is like, you know, I need to be. I need to be. not if i'm a single mother but i need to be a working single mother yeah. for me that was more important that yeah. i need to do this so that i'm able to uh, not just take care of my son take care of myself both of i mean if i can't take care of myself i will not be able to take care of of him so yeah. for me that was more important that i needed to be a working mother so i was very clear hmm. i said this is my path and this is how i'm going to be of course support etc all of that is all there yeah but i mean it's not like i'm sitting on uh you know or i have some family business or i come from some uh you know uh, old money no it's at the end of the day everything i do and everything i am is yeah. self made is self taught uh i strive every single day like you like thousands and you know million other women out there so when they come up to me and say that you know we we were able to take certain steps in our life or certain make certain decisions because we were inspired by by your story or by something that you said uh i can't tell you it, it it's like the most uh, uh enduring it's not and it's it's a very heavy feeling it's a lot of responsibility but it yeah. always brings tears to my eyes and i feel okay yeah. chalo kuch to maine sahi kiya in a situation like that where you're a single mother and then you you're doing so much you're working so much it can be confusing to manage and you can be indecisive but the fact that you can be so clear about your things you know what to put your attention on and what to not put your attention on I think well I think that if somebody had to ask me what is my superpower I would say 
it's clarity. Clarity. <laughs> I would say that is my superpower. Yeah. Very rarely am I shaken or very yes. rarely am I, uh, you know, not sure or, you know, or standing on shaky ground. So, yeah, I, like I said, that would be my superpower. I know you've answered this a lot of times on how you deal with trolls and you've said <coughs> that you don't really care that much. But recently you broke the internet with the outfit that you wore, the sheer embellished gown. How do you turn a deaf ear to what people say now? All I could hear was that it looked fabulous. Yeah. I don't know what anybody else said. Yeah. I don't know, I feel, I don't know what is, it's very, uh, I feel people are very hypocritical. They're hypocrites yeah. if you ask me. Uh, the same thing you would see on a Rihanna, you would see on a J.Lo or a Beyonce and you'd be like, yeah, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I love them. I think they're women who inspire me every single day of life. The same thing you, you do over here, immediately like, what is she doing? She's a mother, she's this, mm. she's that. Mm. Why be hypocrites? I mean, yeah. if you can appreciate the same on somebody else, why can't you appreciate it? Make it a, a, a universal uh, outlook, you know? I mean, yeah. why have these, these double standards? But did it ever bother you when it re first started, when social media just came? Did yeah, happen? of course. I mean, anybody yeah. who says it doesn't, you know, is probably kidding mm -hmm. or is trying to just really, you know, use a great cover up. Initially, yes, yeah. because I think it was new for everybody, yeah. for anyone and everyone. And we were all like, what the hell? I mean, it would upset me and this. But then with time, it goes away. yeah, it, it just kind of, not, it just, I just kind of uh, brushed it aside. It wasn't part and parcel of my, and, and I still know, in fact, my mother, my parents would keep saying, you know, uh, you know, uh, beta, we, you know, someone said this or some, and we finally, I got, I said, sat them down. I said, you know, bus, huh. enough. Stop reading all this garbage. Mm. It's complete BS. Yeah. Please do not fo focus your energy on things like this. There are far better things to look yeah. for because at the, at the end of the day, their parents, they hear something, somebody says, and they're like, you know, <laughs> we read this or we heard yeah. this. Yeah. That was that. And after that, once I sat them down and I said it, I said it's just complete bullshit. So yeah. do not even spend a minute on 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 you know trolls and what you know people say. So that was that, and that was the end of that conversation. It never ever came up in our I, household. I relate to that because even someone commented on my English on some video, and my dad was like, "Is your English not right?" I'm like, "No, his English is not right. It's wrong. <laughs> Don't get affected." So what if my English is not right? Yeah. I'll make a mistake today, and I'll be better tomorrow. Exactly. As simple as that. Yeah. Lastly, before we let you go, there's uh, you made a debut as a producer in the 2000s. Do you have any plans to produce something super? Yeah. Yes, 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 I have lots of plans to be, like you said, I already, yes, that was the first time, but I was a very silent, I was a very, uh, I didn't know what was happening, I was just, yeah. Namke Vaste, I was a producer, I didn't know, but for yeah. me it was all very new and, and exciting, but now there are things that I want to do and I'm very, very involved in, in all of it where I want to be able to produce content which I feel uh, I love or I can relate to or I feel, uh, you know, people will also enjoy, yeah. so yes, I am certainly looking forward to to be producing some good content. So thank you so much. It was lovely having you and it was lovely talking to you. Thank you, an absolute pleasure and thank you for having me Pink Villa. And before we let you go, we have a small surprise. So yours wishing you a very happy Wednesday. I know you're very conscious about your food but yours is cheat you. meal. <laughs> oh nice. No. Why is it cheat meal? The minute you say cheat, cheat meal, meal that means it's like immediately seems like it's not right. It should be that yummy meal yummy. that you look forward to. Yeah, peanut butter and oil. Yeah, I like. Thank you so much Thank and so happy much. Women's Day and uh, uh, may you uh, keep shining on, uh, on Women Up. Yeah. Right? Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Malaika Arora and if you like this interview, feel free to like, share and subscribe to Pink Pillar. Mm -hmm.